Hi, I'm Tom Nahomi and I'm a technology evangelist here at Dell EMC. Today, I have another exciting announcement to give you and show off. Dell Container Storage Modules Dell Container Storage Modules aim at improving the observability, usability and data mobility for stateful applications with Dell Technology Storage Portfolio and extend Kubernetes storage features beyond what is available in the CSI specification. Dell CSM with the CSI plugins and pioneering AppAware app-consistent backup and recovery solutions form the most comprehensive enterprise-grade storage and data protection solutions for Kubernetes from Dell Technologies. The CSM modules expose storage enterprise features directly within Kubernetes so developers are empowered to leverage them for their development in a seamless way. Most of these modules are released as sidecar containers that work with the CSI driver for the Dell Storage Array technology you use. CSM modules are open source and freely available from github.com slash dell slash CSM. The first module I want to talk about relates to the snapshot process in Kubernetes. Many stateful applications can run on top of multiple volumes. For example, we can have a transactional database like Postgres that has a volume for its data and another one for the read log, or with Cassandra that is distributed across nodes, each having a volume, etc. In these highly distributed workloads in microservice architectures, it is challenging to ensure that data is protected without skew. Maintaining referential integrity between applications becomes even more important when breaking down monolith and traditionally run as a single unit. When you want to take a recoverable snapshot, it is vital to take them consistently at the exact same time. Dell CSI Volume Group Snapshotter solves that problem for you. With the help of a custom resource definition, an additional sidecar to the Dell CSI drivers, and leveraging vanilla Kubernetes snapshots that offload the operation to the storage array to create instantaneous native snapshot, you can manage the lifecycle of a crash consistent snapshot. This allows users to group persistent volume claims together and use those volume groups to perform CSI volume snapshot through snapshot groups using the standard Kubernetes API, and then to restore them or migrate them in one go. Replicating data can play an important role in protecting against data loss due to storage array or site failure. Snapshots are a point-in-time recovery which provides a very quick and easy method of recovering data which has been corrupted or accidentally lost as a result of human or technological error. However, they cannot protect against catastrophic failure of the storage array or the site itself. All Dell Technology storage arrays have native synchronous or asynchronous replication mechanism between storage array. Replication mechanism helps to achieve five nines of availability for business critical application, and it's a key component of any disaster recovery plan. With the replication module in place, a Kubernetes user can decide that their stateful application uses a volume that is replicated to another site by choosing a storage class that specifies replication. Behind the scene, the replication module is in charge of creating the replicated volume, checking the according replication process, and of course mounting the volumes to the workload. In case of a failover or failback, the data replicator will take care and reconfigure the replication groups and remount the volumes. This module supports Threat Kubernetes cluster, one cluster with nodes in multiple sites, or replicated Kubernetes clusters, separate clusters in multiple sites, and provides enterprise-grade replication to ensure the data is always available in the event of a failure. The observability module is delivered as an open telemetry agent that collects array-level metrics for storage to scrape them into a Prometheus database. The integration is as easy as creating Prometheus service monitor for Prometheus, and that's it. With the observability module, you will gain visibility not only 
to the capacity of the volume you manage, but also to their performance in terms of bandwidth, IOPS, and response time. Thanks to pre-canned Grafana dashboards, you will be able to go through this metrics history and see the correspondence between the persistent volume claims, persistent volumes, and LAND or file shares in the backend array. The Kubernetes admin can also decide to collect array-level metrics to check the overall capacity performance directly from Prometheus and Grafana, the tools he is used to work with. And there is more to come, pretty fun alerts, new dashboard, and more. So stay tuned. Security is essential in the enterprise. And this is no different for microservice-based application running on your Kubernetes infrastructure. Kubernetes provides role-based access authorization to help regulate access to specific resources within Kubernetes based on set of roles. These mechanisms are great for regulating access for Kubernetes-specific objects such as services, namespaces, quotas, and more. However, these policies alone are not enough to restrict who can request changes to the underlying storage system. With the authorization module, we are giving back more control on the storage consumption to the storage administrators. The authorization module is an independent service that is installed and owned by the storage administrator. Within that module, the storage administrator can create access control policies and storage quotas to make sure that Kubernetes consumers are not over-consuming storage or trying to access data that doesn't belong to them. This module takes multi-tenant architecture real by enforcing role-based access control on storage objects coming from multiple and independent Kubernetes clusters. The authorization module acts as a proxy between the CSI driver and the backend storage array. The access is granted with an access token that can be revoked at any point in time. Quotas can be changed on the fly to limit or increase storage consumption from the different tenants and multiple storage arrays and pools. When it comes to dealing with stateful applications failover, if a node goes down, Kubernetes is pretty conservative. Indeed, from the Kubernetes control plane, the failing node is marked as not ready. It can be because the node is down or there is a network partitioning between the control plane and the node or simply because kubelet is down. In the last two scenarios, the stateful application is still running and possibly writing data to disk. Therefore, Kubernetes won't take any action and lets the admin manually trigger a pod deletion if desired. The resiliency module aims at improving the behavior with the help of collected metrics from the storage array. Since we have access to the storage backend from pretty much all the other nodes, we can see the volume status, mapped or not, as well as its activity, if there is IOPS or not. So when a node goes into not ready state and we see no IOPS on the volume, the resiliency module relocates the pod and its persistent volume to a healthy node and cleans whatever leftover objects might be. The entire process happens in seconds between the moment a node is detected as down and the rescheduling of the pod. To protect an application with the resiliency module, all you have to do is adding a label to it and it is marked as protected from now on. Well, this is just the beginning of the journey for Dell Container Storage modules, and there is a full roadmap with more to come later this year. If you want to be the first to know about incoming features like intelligent volume placement, improved installed mechanism, user interface to manage the Dell CSI modules, you can watch and start the repository github.com slash Dell slash CSM. I really hope you find this demo useful, and thank you very much for watching.